Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our third session of Culture Dose, Art for Wellbeing, a collaboration between the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the Black Dog Institute, where we bring you a fortnightly experience for you to take time out for yourself, to connect with your feelings, thoughts, and imagination. We'd like to start by acknowledgement of country. We acknowledge the traditional owners on the land on which the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the Black Dog Institute stands. We acknowledge the Gadigal and Bidigal peoples of the Eora Nation and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd like to welcome everyone, especially any new participants in today's program, and to welcome back people who have participated in previous programs. My name is Danielle Galotta, and I am the Access Programs Producer at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. In our program, Culture Dose, what we'd like to create is an opportunity for you to have time and space. We'll be looking at three artworks from the collection of the Art Gallery of New South Wales that belongs to all the people of New South Wales. It's your collection that we want to invite you to look closely, to observe, to imagine and respond. And we hope that in this expression, in this program, that we allow you an opportunity to read these works, not only with your eyes, but with your body, so you can feel your emotional response to these artworks. Hello everyone, I'd also like to extend a warm welcome and thank you for joining our third session. I'm Catherine Boydell, I'm a professor of mental health at the Black Dog Institute. And my program of research focuses on using the arts in the research process, both to create or produce research data and to communicate and share research findings using visual, performative and literary genres. Culture Dose is based on an Arts on Prescription program, a collaboration between Danielle and the Art Gallery and myself and Black Dog Institute. And our research exploring the impact of the Arts on Prescription program showed significant increases in mental health and well-being and in a sense of community inclusion and connectedness after a number of sessions of engaging with artworks such as we're going to be doing today. Based on these positive findings, we decided to extend the arts engagement uh, program to the broader public in the form of Culture Dose. I'm really pleased to be moderating the discussion this afternoon. So I'd like you to please ensure that your video and microphone are off during the session. And you'll be invited to share your responses in the chat box. And you'll see that you have the option of responding only to the panelists, Danielle and I, or to all attendees if you want the entire group to view your comments. So I'll be sort of moderating those chats and uh, sharing with the rest of the group the comments that you'll make with response to each of the artworks. We also want to suggest that you might like to have a, a pencil, pen or other materials present during the session in case you'd like to draw, doodle or engage in any other creative activity during the session. You'll also have an opportunity afterwards to think about ways that you might want to respond creatively. The third session, as Danielle mentioned, is Imagining in Colour. And the selection of artworks chosen for this session invite us to reflect on our subjective experiences in response to colour and become aware of the impact of colour on our lives. So to prepare for the session, I'd like to engage you in a very brief meditative exercise to just bring us in touch with our bodies. Begin by bringing your attention into your body. You can close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. You can notice your body seated wherever you're seated, feeling the weight of your body on the chair, on the floor. Take a few deep breaths. And as you take a deep breath, 
bring in more oxygen, enlivening the body. And as you exhale, have a sense of relaxing more deeply. You can notice your feet on the floor, notice the sensations of your feet touching the floor, the weight and pressure, vibration, heat. You can notice your legs against the chair, pressure, pulsing, heaviness, lightness. Notice your back against the chair. Bring your attention into your stomach area. If your stomach is tense or tight, let it soften. Take a breath. Notice your hands. Are your hands tense or tight? See if you can allow them to soften. Notice your arms. Feel any sensation in your arms. Let your shoulders be soft. Notice your neck and throat. Let them be soft. Relax. Soften your jaw. Let your face and facial muscle muscles be soft. Then notice your whole body present. Take one more breath. Be aware of your whole body as best you can. Take a breath. And then when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Thank you, Catherine. As Catherine mentioned, our theme for today is Imagining in Colour. The works that we present to you today, we'd like you to focus on your personal reading of the works and for you to become aware of your associations to the colours that you see and also to reflect on how our responses to colour can be impacted by our lived experiences and the different cultures we have been immersed in. We're going to transition to our first work for today. You'll be struck by the dazzling array of colour. I imagine your eyes flickering and dancing as you survey the artwork. Take time to look. It may take a few moments for your eyes to adjust and the image to come into view. You'll be struck by the interior. This is a domestic scene. You'll notice the dominance of the mustard colors, the canary yellow, the flickering of light that the artist has drawn our attention to. You'll notice the high ceilings, the wooden architrave, and the dabs and strokes of green, pink, and blue on the walls around. Okay. 
you'll notice the bookshelf in the background filled with various novels that have been read in this room. Placed on the bookshelf is an artwork. The image has been cropped, so we see part of the artwork. And our focus is drawn back to the wardrobe. You'll notice the colours of the wooden panels. A deep mahogany tone of brown with flickers of blue and green. The interior door, golden, orange and ochres. The artist has mysteriously created an experience for us. The artist has allowed us to peek inside. We see an array of fabrics, perhaps of clothes, stored and folded. On the shelf, you'll notice the vibrant golden canary yellow of the piece of fabric that's draped over. We notice the pinks, the burgundies, and the kaleidoscope of colours that exist within the fabrics and the shadows. We also notice the mirror that reveals to us the exterior, the light filled garden beyond the room. We see the bright blue sky. the light green lawn and the dark green of a hedge. And beyond the hedge, tall trees shown in dabs, flickers and strokes. You'll also notice in the mirror that we see the interior frame of the window and we see the reflection of a chair that has been draped with a golden cloth. This is a quiet domestic scene However, with the light and colours, we have an energetic scene. 
that I hope brings a sense of curiosity. Imagining who this room belongs to. What are they doing? Why has the artist depicted the cupboard open? Are they packing, rearranging? Or creating a sense of mystery for us? This artwork is a sensory delight. Using all the colours of the colour wheel. Warm tones, cool tones, primary and secondary colours. It's almost as if the artist has created a mosaic with small square strokes side by side. And I hope the longer you have observed the painting that the image comes into form and that you notice the energy and the dazzling light that the artist has spent time looking and appreciating and wanting to share with us. I'd like to invite you to share what you imagine is happening in this room. Daily routine. Preparing for a picnic. It's a personal space. I like the idea of packing to go away for a summer holiday. It's being lived in. In my place, I leave cupboards open all the time. A morning scene after waking up. Airing and sorting on a warm, bright day. Airing the cupboards after a damp time of rain. A morning scene after waking up. I imagine that a welcome guest is waking up in a home. Sorry, there's lots of comments here <laughs> that they are loved. <laughs> um, someone confined to bed and the mirror is positioned to see the outdoors. Looks like a bedroom with possibly the cupboard door being used to create a double view of the outside for an ill person. Choosing to read a book on a warm and sunny day and setting chores aside. Those are lovely comments. Mm, they're beautiful. And I get a sense of people seeing this image as a sanctuary, a place of warmth and safety. We've got a comment from uh, Helene, can feel a light breeze and smell of summer. So again, calling up those senses. And I wonder if people get a sense from the view outside and that light blue sky that perhaps it's a scene in Australia, an Australian artwork. Was that clear bright blue star sky with just just a hint of white clouds and the tall eucalyptus trees 
that we can see the light through. Someone, uh, Tony said Mossman. It's not far from there, actually. <laughs> This is a much loved work in the collection at the Art Gallery of New South Wales. We've got a comment from Rhonda. I think it's in an urban area because country people don't leave gates or doors open. <laughs> The artist here is a master colorist, able to work with a palette that is very complex. So even in the shadows, the artist sheds light and color. And I don't even think there is a mark of black in this artwork. Shadow is shown with an array of complementary colors. We have Eddie. a few more, oh, sorry, Daniel, we've got a few more comments I just wanted to share. Um, uh, we have a comment, my favorite thing of all is the teal chair next to the bookcase. And another, the blue on the brown door is an interesting choice. Um, so again, calling up, um, I guess, noticing distinct colors here. The scene seems to be a soft, quiet space in someone's day, perhaps making a tea. It evokes soft smells of wattle and heat. Mm, I'm so happy that someone has brought in that sensory experience. And I agree, this is very much a work that we you know, not only with our eyes, that we read the artwork, but with our senses. So when we view this work and we notice our body and breath, we can imagine this fragrance from the garden and perhaps some hot tea that's perhaps on a side table, as well as the touch of those fabrics. with their cotton, velvet or silk. There's that sense that the person who owns this space would have a sensory experience while folding and placing these objects away. We have some other comments. The colors in the rug are so vibrant and soft. Um, someone else, uh, I love the fabrics, textiles. Uh, we have a comment from Tony. She is a wonderful artist. Uh, Josephine says, I imagine the cool of the interior and the promising warmth of the outdoors reflected in the mirror. Um, we also have a comment um, about some background noise, which we'll try to keep to a minimum if possible. Thanks, Marina. The beautiful comments. I'm going to invite you to share what you would title this artwork. Whether you would think of something poetic, something, a title inspired by the colors, or something more imaginative. Summer afternoon in the bed sheets. <laughs> That's lovely. A soft place to land. Room with a view to inside and out. Mm. Bother spring cleaning. A warm afternoon reflections. Running late for work. Spring clean out. Mid morning in Mossman. Dazzling array of colors healing space. Uh, 
a room of one's own. The Turkish carpet. Well, thank you for sharing those. They're, they're fabulous titles. I'm going to share with you the artists and the title. So the artist is the Australian modernist, Grace Cossington Smith. And the title of the artwork is a very humble title, Interior with Wardrobe Mirror from 1955. So we can see from many of, the, many of your comments and observations that we can appreciate that this is a very familiar space for Grace Cossington Smith. It was a familiar room in her home that she observed and painted many, many times. And the medium here is oil paint. So the strokes and dabs of colour placed side by side are very clear and very much influenced by the post-impressionist movement. So definitely a modernist work that brings us the delight of colour. We have a comment, Danielle, from Tan, a lockdown illuminated fields. <laughs> mm. Well, I hope you've enjoyed how Grace has captured the light and atmosphere of this room but also created a sense of curiosity for us all by leaving those cupboard doors open. We're going to transition to our second work, which has a very different feeling. I'm going to allow you some time to survey the work. to observe closely. I imagine you'll be struck by the stylization of this piece. the pairing back. The subtlety of line and the flatness of colour. Again, here we have an interior, a space that the artist is very familiar with, that the artist has experienced many times. I'd like you to notice the corner of the room. The mustard toned walls. With flicks of canary yellow. You'll notice the woodwork, the woodwork and panelling on the walls, on the lower walls. It 
in tones of grey and white. To the left, you see a figure. You see the form of the oval head. And we get a sense that the person is reflecting. There's also almost a hint of a profile. The person appears to have a grey jumper or top and has their arm resting on their waist. They're wearing a patterned skirt or apron that has dabs of pink salmon and that wonderful bright yellow. You notice the figure's attention is on the tabletop. The broad fabric that has been draped across the table. This vivid cherry colour. warm and expansive, dominates the composition. Danielle, we have a comment from Claudia who says it feels so muted after the last work. It is interesting how viewing different paintings before or after can affect your emotions in relation to a work. This feels a lot sadder to me than it might have if I had not seen the Cosington Smith piece immediately before. Definitely. So our, when we read an artwork, our experiences of what we've seen before or our lived experience, our memories, will impact how we read a work. And that is why it's so wonderful to have a shared viewing experience because we will all see something very different. And I agree, this is a much more subdued work. Much more subtle and pulled back. Marina says, I agree this painting looks like it is depicting a person who has little money, is pregnant again, she is looking at the high chair. And Tracy says, I have an immense feeling of sadness and loss coming from this piece. It is, it, it is more of a reflective piece. So when you view this work, take note of your breath, of your body, how you feel. The tones in this work are warm and at the same time more reflective and subdued. We have some other comments. There seems to be no breathing space in the room. Um, another, no one around my table now. Um, a question, is it muted because of the medium print? Um, and Anne says, a feeling of loneliness pervades. Where is everyone? 
Uh, Lanny, despite the color in this piece and the opening up of how the room is positioned, it feels claustrophobic and oppressive. Mm. Another comment, also a lack of hair from serious illness. These are very interesting comments. Thank you for sharing them. So again, the work is open to your interpretation. The artist here has given us a glimpse, a passing moment of what the artist has seen in their own home. Is this the preparation for a dinner or a gathering? Or perhaps as someone has suggested, is it the aftermath of a gathering and the exhausted host? We have a comment uh, regarding notice of body response. Um, I feel my stomach and lower ribs closing in and my breath shortening. And Catherine says, I saw the high chair as a towel rack, odd chairs and cloth as a cupboard door, very humble existence. And Tan says, warm colors offer a warmth that draws you near and cradles. Mm. Thank you for those comments. And I'd like to draw your attention to the vase with the flower, which could be a camellia flower, it could be a rose that is placed upon the cabinet on the back wall. And I wonder if that is just about to be placed back on the table putting things back in order. We have a comment, it's strange to see a big empty table occupy the key focal point of the picture. It's a bit unsettling. So perhaps this work is about stimulating a memory for the artist. So we know that sometimes artists may draw and paint or sketch in front of a motif or in front of a scene. And at times there are other artists who will draw inspiration from their lived experiences, from moments in time. And I think here perhaps we are looking at one of these memories And because it's not as sharp, and because the color is muted, and it's dominated by this tabletop, this almost a sea of burgundy, we can imagine that it's almost a dreamlike image, a memory that the artist is bringing forward. have some other comments. Um, I get the feeling from the scratchy marks in the foreground that perhaps it is a view from someone looking into the room from a window. Mm. Maybe everyone has left home now and she's reflecting on the empty space. And we have another comment, very distinctive cherry color may reflect something. And I think this restraint of color in one way, there's a restraint of, we don't have any greens or blues. We've got these warm tones. But at the same time, it's vibrant and energetic. It may make you contemplate or reflect on some of the spaces in your home. Perhaps areas that are in your peripheral view at the moment. What do you notice? What are the colors that you see?
what colours would you use to depict your own environment? We have a comment. Distorted perspective creates a sense of unsettledness. A woman mourning over her lost child. Red representing love, danger. And again, it's really interesting to hear how people interpret colour and in different cultures and our different lived experiences, colour may suggest, for example, red could be passion or love or for other people, danger or warning. We have another comment. Uh, my eye keeps sliding off the piece from right to left. And Tracy says, it's reminding me of the memories of my late mother telling me about the big heavy table in her childhood home, eight children, which was a small flat above a shop in London. I never saw the table. Anne comments, the power of red, the woman's focus and longing. Claudia, it is so sad and unsettling, such an overwhelming sense of loss. Uh, Kai May, that the table takes up the room, makes it seem that meals and eating together was the most important thing. That's a very interesting comment. COVID-19, lockdown, loneliness. The comment on the London apartment is very interesting. We often are told that in Australia, we have one of the um, most spacious um, space, spaced um, homes. So I want you to imagine that perhaps this isn't in Australia and it is overseas and perhaps in an apartment where you, sometimes you need to be flexible and move around carefully around spaces. But I think the person who mentioned that the meal sharing was the most important time of the day, perhaps for this family is probably correct as it dominates the room. We imagine who would be sitting at this table. And if we had a table like this, who would we have seated around us? We'll also notice behind the figure is a vertical scroll. Or poster. I wonder what the image would be. It looks a bit similar to this, the image behind you, Danielle. <laughs> oh, it does actually. <laughs> uh, we've got some more comments. A Chinese family in London above a restaurant. Uh, someone else, I noticed the head chair is a bright gold color. Uh, Tony says a country house in France. Um, someone else noted the same image as Danielle. Um, Anne says, I'm struck by the lack of windows, particularly in contrast to the last work. Wonderful observations. Someone drew our attention to the fact that this was a print. And you probably will notice some fine lines, some fine drawing lines. In particular, you can make it out in that small vase and flower, as well as in the golden chair. 
and in the figure. I'm imagining that I can see a bow near her waist and I can see that is the mark of the pencil or the crayon in this sense. We have a comment, uh, graphite pencil and watercolor, possibly gouache. does have that sense of, of layers. And in, in particular in the, the walls and the tablecloth, you can see the layer of, of pigment and the wateriness. We have a question from Tony, lithograph. Yes, you're correct. Um, I'll share with you the artist and the medium. And you may just, I'll draw your attention before we move to the bottom left corner. You will be able to see a pencil mark, as well as on the far right, you'll be able to see a pencil mark of the letter B. So yes, we can see right down in the corner. Sorry, my, I get a little PowerPoint thing in the corner, so I can't see it now. <laughs> um, you'll see the edition number. So I'll reveal the artist, and some of you may have picked that it is the great French colorist, Pierre Bonnard. And it's very humbly titled, the red cloth. So for people who saw the dominance of that table, it's exactly what the artist was drawing our attention to. Perhaps that fleeting moment of walking past, maybe glimpsing into the room and having that memory of perhaps the preparation of an event about to take place. We have a comment, Danielle, from Tony, um, who uh, says, wow, very muted for Bernard. Mm, yes. Pierre Bernard would create these magnificent colorist masterpieces with flicks of color that created dreamlike creations of the 20th century, of everyday living that was very familiar to him. But for our viewers, for us, these were poetic visions. And I think when we take time out and we spend more than a few moments viewing an artwork, we have a deeper engagement. We're able to connect our breath and our body with this figure. We can imagine and empathise. We have a comment from Claudia. I wonder if the sadness comes from the time at the end of World War II. Perhaps yes. So again, artists are impacted and influenced by the society they live in, the events that are around them will impact in their expressions.
we'll transition to our third work, which again will be, again, very different. So again, I ask you to survey the artwork to take note of the organic forms you'll notice the swirls the forms Or draw your attention to the colours. These are complementary colours. We see these tones of muted orange. Flicks of golden yellow. a muted olive green, almost the grass green colour. I'd like you to also notice the white, the white circles, or white lights. I hope you get a sense of movement. In the upper third of the composition, we see swirls. They almost see, seem free formed. We have some comments, Danielle. Um, a comment this book is stunning. Um, a reflection of clouds. There's a sense of independent beings connected to a larger whole in the white circles and yellow lines. Enigmatic energy. Their wonderful comments. It actually reminds me immediately of the comforting anime cartoon childhood show Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, someone else, the white lights remind me of the Min Min lights. Hmm. The lower third of the composition has a different treatment. There's a sense of an ebb and flow. We see a darker ochre tone flowing within or through the mustard tone of yellow. There's definitely a sense of fluidity in this artwork.
We have that sense of dynamic flow and presence of wakefulness and vitality, windswept dust clouds moving, or a baby in utero, the salts being measured, dots to check size and growth, lower part blood flow through the umbilical cord. Mm. Very poetic readings. And you'll notice as we've transitioned through the three artworks that each, as we've progressed, we have become, we've seen more stylization and a pulling back of the artist. In a way here, the artist has given us a sense of delight of movement and colour. We have flying over a river and uh, if there was a God. Mm. I'd like to draw your attention to the parameters of the artwork. And you'll notice that the work is on a piece of paper and you can see the rectangular, rectangular edges of colour. Perhaps you'll also notice the overlay of colour when you look closely you can see the overlay of that bright yellow upon the green And you may notice in the bottom right hand corner, some pencil writing. You may note the name of the artwork that the artist has handwritten in cursive. as well as the artist has signed and numbered the edition. I'd like to invite you to perhaps share what you would title this artwork. Dancing in another world. Reflections of dreaming. Beyond the here and now. Sentient beings, light and movement. Mm. Where the water spirits dwell. Thank you for sharing those. They're really beautiful, again, poetic associations. I, reveal, I will reveal the artist and the title. So as you may have read in the bottom right hand corner, the artist is Dorrit Black an Australian modernist artist. And this is a lino print, a coloured three block lino print that has been entitled Water Spirits. And I, I'm quite curious in this work of the use of the yellows and oranges. For me, I'm delighted that she has used those tones rather than an array of blues, violets and greens. 
And I really enjoyed hearing people's responses to these works because there was that sense of energy and the ethereal that many people had shared. I'm just going to go to our review slide where we can have a look at the three works that we've spent time with this afternoon. Three very different artists that we'd like to ask you to share with us which work resonated with you most. Was it the vibrancy of the kaleidoscope of mosaic colour in the Grace Cossington Smith? The very poetic and subdued Pierre Bonnard? Or the final work, the lino print by Doris Black? that is more abstracted and poetic. Each one of us will respond differently. It's very interesting to see how in this session, it has been the first work that had resonated with quite a number of you. Thank you again for sharing those responses. It's always quite curious to see how people respond. So, we're coming to the end of our session and we'd like to invite you to share, to create and share a response to the artwork or themes explored in this session. Again, your response could take the quick, could be a quick sketch of an idea. It could be a drawing of the corner of your room today or a memory of an experience. It could even be an image captured on your phone or a poem that explores the theme of being mindful and present. And we invite you to share via the email of culturedose at blackdog.org.au or on the other avenues of social media. As a resource, the Art Gallery of New South Wales will post an art set of these three artworks for you to revisit, to explore, and hopefully to share with others. And perhaps you may like to facilitate a viewing experience. So on behalf of the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the Black Dog Institute, I'd like to, I'd like to thank you for taking time out with us this afternoon and that we trust that you had an experience that has allowed you to be present, to become aware of your subjective response to colour and to notice how it impacts on our lives. In a few moments, a survey will pop up in your browser and we invite you to take a few moments to share your experience. Our next session will be around the theme of an artistic vision. So we invite you to book in and we look forward to sharing some time with you again in a fortnight. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a wonderful day.